everyone, my name is Shauna in case to know and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to be telling you things that new YouTubers should know. I will cover things like how to make a thumbnail, how to take good thumbnail pictures, how to get the best lighting, and things along those lines. So hopefully this video will be really informative and helpful and even if you have been on YouTube for a while hopefully you find some new tips and tricks on how to manage YouTube and do all of those things. First let's start off with lighting. With lighting you want to try and find a pretty bright lighting that doesn't take away all your features because of how bright it is. I prefer to use natural light by my window, but unfortunately I'm in a state where the weather is really unpredictable and sometimes in the middle of filming videos the lighting changes. It is what it is and can't be fixed because I have been struggling to find a good light that isn't natural. Some people use ring lights and other light forms that are just very bright and LED. The thing about those is that if you wear glasses, the ring light light will be in your glasses. It's up to you whether you like that or not. I personally hate it. I find that a lot of those lights that you put in yourself have a humming noise to it. Now you, as the creator, might not be able to hear it, but as someone who has really sensitive hearing, it really turns me off and makes me not want to watch a video when I hear a buzzing in the background. So unfortunately, when I film videos with my ring light, I could hear the buzzing in the background. Also, if you do use an unnatural light, like one that you bought yourself, Please be careful of where you place the light when you're filming. You don't want to have it too low or too high. Depending on where you do it, sometimes it will make weird lines from like glasses and different things on your face and weird shadows. Or sometimes it will emphasize this part of your mouth and make it look like it sticks out. So just be like wary of that when you're trying to use a light that isn't natural light. And I highly recommend finding a light source, whether it be natural or not natural, that is not your overhead ceiling tit because unfortunately those don't work very well for videos. Most of my grading videos have been ones that I have filmed with the ceiling tit and they did not look good at all. Next up, thumbnails. I will have to insert some screen recordings here of how to make thumbnails. I'll include a few different ways. To film a thumbnail at the end of your video, do whatever facial expression you want and then take the photo. I recommend trying to identify which emotion you are trying to portray. If you made a video, say like, oh, I'm depressed and you're smiling in the picture, like people are going to be so confused and they're not going to want to click on it. So make sure that the thumbnail is relevant to the video and that you're showing the proper facial expression. And if your video had any sort of props, like if it was a book related video, hold those up in the thumbnail, get people interested and just make it look fun and nice. And next up you'll be hearing some voiceover of me making thumbnails. But when you are filming a thumbnail, just do it like the last few seconds of your video after you finish like goodbye, do it there, like smile, and just do some poses so you have a few options and just go back and screenshot it once you are done. So here I am with the voice recording. I'm going into my photos and finding the footage that I took and I'm just going to be scrolling to the end of the video where I filmed the thumbnail. So yeah, that's about where I filmed the thumbnail. I just did some poses and I just found the one that I wanted the best to screenshot it. I took off portrait lock, turned it on its side to screenshot it. That's really important to make sure that it's top quality. So you can see it went to my screenshots. Now I am heading over on to Pixart, which is an editing app. This is taking a while to load. And that's a previous thumbnail that I made. So basically you are going to select your photo and the number one thing that I recommend doing is with PixArt I like to whiten my teeth a little bit. Now not a ton but if you have super yellow teeth in your photo it's not going to make people want to click on your video unfortunately because people are very judgmental. Don't do it over the top, you don't want your teeth to look super fake white. So now I'm just showing you over here, you can go to FX Effects and you can click on HDR and definitely like fade it a little bit but this sometimes helps your photo look more crisp i use this on most of my instagram photos and over here i'm just showing you that they do have a youtube crop feature so if the photo you want to do isn't in the youtube thumbnail format just go into crop and click the youtube thumbnail format and i don't do borders anymore but if you want to do borders this is how you do it And then over here, I am just saving the photo to sit download photo. And then I am heading on over to Fonto, which is what I use for text. It is my favorite app for text. So just select your photo like you see on the screen. And then you can go in here and add your text. Do not do too many words on your thumbnail or else people will not be able to see what it reads or and it will look really crammed on there. So I'm just typing out the name of this video. And 
And then using a shadow is really important. It makes your text pop. And then you can change spacing. Make sure your words aren't too far apart. Make sure they aren't too close together. And then center it in the middle of the video. I mean, the middle of the thumbnail. What am I saying? It's 3 a.m. when I'm filming this voiceover. Now I'm going to show you further things I do to make my face look a little more desirable in photos so that people will click on the video. So I'm using this airbrush app and essentially I'm just going to remove imperfections on my face. Don't remove anything that makes you special. If you have a birthmark on your face, leave it there. But you can remove things like acne or moles unless a mole is one of the distinctive features of your appearance that you are okay with people seeing. So now I'm going over to Safari to show you how to use the background mover. I just type in background mover and I click the one that's free that isn't the ad. So that is one that I click. With background mover, you're going to find that sometimes they don't always turn out the way you want. So this photo right here is not going to turn out the way that I want. I could go into an app and erase that deck or I could just upload another image like what I am doing right now. So I'm just uploading another one where it's easier for the thing to identify the background and the photo that I want in the front. You could go in with PixArt and use the eraser feature to make it a little better, but that's not what I'm going to do here. Now I'm going to look up movies. I'm going to show you how to use a collage in the background of your thumbnail. So I'm just looking up 2021 movies, just per se, this video was about 2021 movies or whatever. So I'm saving these onto my phone. Do not screenshot these, just hit download image so that it's in your photos. So there we go, I've got three. I like to do three a lot when I'm doing collages. It's just a nice number for the YouTube thumbnail, just like aesthetically looks nice. So I'm going back to my handy dandy PixArt and you need to click on collage and click on the photos that you want in the collage. Now just click on the first one that like has all the ones there because with the square, it doesn't have the format that I want. And then you wanna scroll through them and find the one that you want. I like the one where they're all side by side and you want to choose the layout that is the YouTube thumbnail layout so that it fits better when you go to add it on YouTube Studio, which is what I use for thumbnails. You can add a border if you want. You don't have to. I don't like using borders that much. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my face on top of this collage. This makes it more personal so that people know that you are more of a personal channel and not a channel just doing voiceovers. As you can see, I discarded it because I want to show you something else here. A lot of times you can blur the background and it will make your face pop and sometimes it will look really cool. I like doing this with bookshelves and book videos. And yeah, you just add your photo on top like that. Ta-da! And then I almost forgot, this is how you add a thumbnail to your YouTube video. Go to the app YouTube Studio, which is on your phone. Go to your video, click on your video, click the edit button, which is a little pencil, and then you can edit your thumbnail. Next up, if your goal is to gain more subscribers, I highly recommend sticking to a consistent schedule. I found that when I uploaded sporadically, I would get very little followers, but when I uploaded more on a schedule and informed people in the video of what the schedule is, so say I say, I upload three videos a week, I'll see you next Friday, I'll see you next Monday, I'll see you next Tuesday, things like that. That is more likely to help you gain followers because it shows that you're serious about what you're doing, you're putting time into it, and you're being consistent with your uploads. Eventually, once you get popular enough, you don't necessarily have to be super consistent with your uploads. I mean, take like Colleen Ballinger, for example, ignoring her vlog channel. On her main channel, she doesn't do it like consistently like once a week or whatever. She just does it whenever and like Dan and Phil just whenever and they do really well, but that's because they are really popular. When you're a smaller YouTuber, you want to make a lot of videos so that it keeps getting into people's feeds and people keep seeing it, so there's more of a chance that people click on your videos. Next up, let's address comments. When you respond to a comment, it gives a person a notification that you have responded to their comment, if you like the comment, or if you heart the comment to show that the creator liked the comment, then the person will be notified. The perks of this is that if people want to check your reply or if people open the notifications and click on the notification, it will bring them back to your video so you'll be getting another view potentially. Now this is a good thing and a lot of people use this. They also use it to build a community by responding to comments. It works really well for some people. However, if you are someone who gets really emotional and really feels emotions really deeply, 
reading the comments may not be worth the risk for you because while reading the comments could potentially help you get more subscribers, help you interact with your fans more, your mental health should be the most important thing when it comes to YouTube. If you have to take a week off from posting videos because you're in a bad mental health space, then that's completely okay to do that. The tough thing about YouTube as compared to other social media is that I feel like with YouTube it is much harder to track down who someone is based off of the comment that they leave. So if you're getting a hate comment and you want to take like action against them, whether it be like legal action or like finding them on all social media and blocking them, it's not going to be as easy to do and you will get a lot of hate comments on YouTube. People criticize the simplest things. Have a pimple, they might criticize it. Have bad lighting, they're going to criticize it. There's a ton of people on YouTube who are trolls and will strategically watch your videos just to leave trolling comments. I think I was at like 30 subscribers when I got my first hate comment. So just like keep that in mind. Even if you're a small YouTuber, you will get hate comments. So if you feel you can't handle it, there's no shame in not checking your comment section. I haven't been checking my comments as much recently because of a situation I'm dealing with. Video on that link down in the description below. But basically like protect your mental health. That should be most important. Don't want this idea of fame and being popular on YouTube and making money and stuff get rid of taking care of yourself. Like taking care of yourself has to be top priority for all YouTubers. The next thing is practice makes perfect, especially with what you are saying. I have like word vomit nonstop when I am editing my videos. Just edit it out. I'll show you how I edit it in a screen recording in just one sec. But don't be afraid to say a complicated sentence three times in a row. Like just do what you have to do to get it sounding really clear. Here's how I edit my videos. I use the app iMovie. Basically, I do a lot of playing the video and then pausing and then using the split feature, using the little like, was that scissors? And I just delete the clips that I split that I don't want in there when I stumble over my words and stuff like that. And then over here, I'm showing you more features. This is how to speed up your video or slow it down for different effects. Here is how to adjust the volume, which is really important for when you add background music, which is what I'm about to show you because you do not want your music to make it so it's hard to hear what you're saying. And here's how to add text to your video. And here's how to add background music. You just click that little plus, then you go here, you click the video you want, you click audio only, screen record the video you want for the background music. That's what I recommend doing. And then just add the audio only from that screen recording. Then over here, I'm showing you how to add photos. I use the split screen in the picture in picture. And first I'm gonna show you what the split screen looks like. So it looks like this, and then I like to click the button to remove the white mark and then zoom out if you want the full picture to be visible, but there will be black marks on the side. And then I'm gonna show you how to do picture in picture, which is the same thing, just click picture in picture. It will show up in a box like that, which is a little unfortunate. I don't know how to fix it. You can zoom to do the picture differently and have it look differently zoomed, if that makes any sense, and then you can move it around and whatnot. The final thing that I want to leave you with really quickly is that it's important to leave trigger warnings and content warnings for your YouTube videos. This will make your channel more accessible to people who may have PTSD, misophonia, or other things. So leave content warnings and trigger warnings for things like flashing lights, talk of depression or suicidal ideation, talk of anxiety, any sort of mental health issues, or any sort of like murder, rape, any triggering thing like that. And also be sure to include a content warning for chewing noises like eating for people like me who have misophonia it really helps us out a lot oh and one last thing that i almost forgot dislikes do not matter on your video don't let dislikes discourage you from making videos at the end of the day when or if you start earning money on youtube those people who are disliking your videos are giving you views you will be making money off of people who are hating on your videos and disliking them and they're giving you more views, they're giving you more clout. So don't let them affect you because know that in the long run, they're just helping you get more popular and earn more money. This is all for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, feel free to give that thumbs up and subscribe to me if you haven't already. All of my other social media will be linked down in the description below. And I upload videos three times a week, so I will see you next Monday for my next video. And also in case you missed that little self promo part that I just did there, that's it. extremely important for your videos. Remind people to subscribe because people will forget. They are humans, they will forget. So yeah. Goodbye, everyone.